His wife Jezebel came in and asked him, Why are you so sullen? Why won't you eat? He answered her, Because I said to Naboth the Jezreelite, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard in its place. But he said, I will not give you my vineyard. Jezebel his wife said, Is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up and eat. Cheer up. I'll get you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, placed his seal on them, and sent them to the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city with him. In those letters she wrote, Proclaim a day of fasting, and seat Naboth in a prominent place among the people. But seek two scoundrels opposite him, and have them testify that he has cursed both God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. So the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city did as Jezebel directed in the letters she had written to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth in a prominent place among the people. Then two scoundrels came and sat opposite him and brought charges against Naboth before the people, saying, Naboth has cursed both God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent word to Jezebel, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Get up and take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, that he refused to sell you. He is no longer alive, but dead. When Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, he got up and went down to take possession of Naboth's vineyard. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He is now in Naboth's vineyard, where he has gone to take possession of it. Say to him, This is what the Lord says. Have you not murdered a man and seized his property? Then say to him, This is what the Lord says. In the place where dogs licked up Naboth's blood, dogs will lick up your blood. Yes, yours. Ahab said to Elijah, So you have found me, my enemy. I have found you, he answered, because you have sold yourself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord. I am going to bring disaster on you. I will consume your descendants and cut off from Ahab every last male in Israel, slave or free. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and that of Baasha, son of Ahijah, because you have provoked me to anger and have caused Israel to sin. And also concerning Jezebel, the Lord says, Dogs will devour Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Dogs will eat those belonging to Ahab who die in the city, and the birds of the air will feed on those who die in the country. There was never a man like Ahab who sold himself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord, urged on by Jezebel his wife. He behaved in the vilest manner by going after idols like the Amorites the Lord drove out before Israel. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and fasted. He lay in sackcloth and went around meekly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Have you noticed how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself, I will not bring this disaster in his day, but I will bring it on his house in the days of his son. Dear. I love you so much, Akadish Baruch and I love studying your word. I love how you punished Achav, but not in his life. Why? He just told you. He was evil, vile, did wicked things. So why did Hashem not destroy him completely? And he did. That's why his blood got licked up by the dogs. But the destruction, he didn't really see it so bad. Why? Because he humbled himself in front of God. This is somebody that the prophet already told you is an animal, disgusting pig. But since he put sackcloth and ashes and he felt bad and humbled himself, and like it said, walked around meekly, Hashem reduced his punishment. Think about that, yo. He had shame in front of Elijah when he heard the word of God. And you're going to hear later on, at the end of this video, 
how one of the kings slapped one of the prophets, yo. And, and he said to him, throw him in jail. And when I come back, I'll deal with him. He goes, that's if you come back. You understand? Every time you're going to go against God, it's going to end up in a tragedy. I don't know how many times. I have to tell you this, by the way. I'm about to tell you something I thought about the other day that's so deep. This is going to help you big time. If you curse, if you look at immodest women on computers, sin with women, whatever you want. Let me give you some good advice. Do you think that if every other word out of your mouth is a curse, you think you're going to go to heaven? They don't curse in heaven, so they will not let you in. Right away, you're going to get in. The minute you say the F curse, they're going to open the door and they're going to fling you to get in home to clean your mouth. You understand? All day you have thoughts of immodest women in your mind. What do you think? You're going to enter heaven like that? Never. You'll enter heaven pure. The minute you start thinking about these things, that's it. An angel will come, grab you by the foot, drag you out, and slingshot you to get in home to clean it. You understand? Think about this, bro. Before you do the sin, remember that this sin will prevent you from getting to heaven. Let me just tell you what heaven is so you get an understanding. It's something that lasts forever. It's real. It's not temporary. And it's the greatest peace you can ever experience. That's it. That's heaven. So we all want to get it, I'm assuming, right? So you cannot get it if you're filled with sin. If you gossip all day, like these people on the news, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, all these anchors, right? They look glamorous. They make a lot of money. All they do is talk about people all day and gossip. They're done. They're done. They're done. They're done. There's like no coming back from that, bro. No coming back because there's years and years and years of footage of them murdering people, mocking people, making nicknames and embarrassing people. They don't understand what the punishment is, yo. They don't understand, man. It's scary to me to think how they don't understand when you destroy a person's reputation. It's worse than a murder. Because you're murdering him while he's alive. It's like you're stabbing him and he's bleeding out. But at the same time, you're giving him mouth to mouth to keep him alive. You understand what's going on? Yo, this is craziness when I tell you, bro. They don't understand the kind of a murder. Let me put it to you like this, man. This is so beautiful. I love you forever for this and for many other things. But this is dope. The way you're making me say it right now. I so appreciate it, yo. This is deep. Look at the snake. The snake. He spoke slander. He spoke gossip. He tried to ruin God's reputation. And look what happened to him, yo. Arms chopped. Legs chopped. And eats dust for the rest of his life, even in the next world. You understand? Forever. Think about that, yo. That's very scary, yo. Very scary, yo. Very scary. I mean, if that's not showing you how serious God takes it, because if, you know, gossip and slander was no big deal... Hashem would have laughed it off. He's lying. Nobody cares. But that's not what happened. Hashem utterly destroyed him forever and kept him alive. Yo, yo, yo. You don't understand, yo. It's one thing Hashem is going to make you suffer and kill you right away. Fine. It's another thing. He's going to make you suffer and keep you alive to suffer the suffering. You understand? You better get away from this gossip, bro. You better get away. It's ugly. It's dirty. And you don't understand when you just talk and talk and talk. Like, I love these podcasts, yo. They make me laugh. You know why? Because the Satan has a field day with it, bro. It's two, three people sitting down for four or five hours just talking about nonsense. Looking for gossip. Looking, looking for gossip. Yo, I can't even explain it to you, bro. And then on top of all of that, they don't even, like, you know, report the facts. This allegedly this, but they don't tell you allegedly. Oh, he did this, and I heard he did this. That's what the best one. You hear somebody say, and I heard he did. Run away, yo. Run away. What do you mean you heard? You heard you. Don't talk about it, bro. Don't talk. Those words should never come out of your mouth. Yo, I heard that this person did. This. Don't do that, yo. If you know 100% and it's hurting people and you want to warn them, fine. Say, I know. And tell them, yo, be careful from this person. You'll take a monetary loss. No problem. You can do that, yo, to protect your brother. But to just slander people like what they do to Trump, yo, it's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life, yo. Because they take such pride and such joy. Joy Reid. Whoopi, like, whoop-dee-doo. Yeah, Whoopi Goldberg. 
Can you imagine these people, bro, 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 bro. psychotic, psychotic how they get pleasure from trying to murder this guy. You don't like him? Fine. Don't like him, but you don't have to murder him, yo. When we were young, we learned a sentence that was so beautiful. I wish it applied to today, but the world is so evil, so unholy. It's not even close, yo. If you have nothing nice to say, keep your mouth closed. That's it. Silence is golden. When your mouth is closed, you can't get in trouble. But if you don't have nothing nice to say, just don't say anything, yo. That's it. It's always better to be silent in those situations. Because even if it's a situation where you're saying to yourself, you know what, I'm going to say what he did wrong. But right away, I'm going to say right away what he did good. I'll even start it. You know, I love him. He's like, you're going to see after five minutes, you're done. That's it. The Satan already dig the grave with your own tongue and you don't even know you dug it. It's deep, bro. Listen to me, man. You want to be holy? Stay away from gossiping. Stay away from immodest women. Stay away from things that excite you physically with your eyes. You understand? I'm going to tell you something so deep right now. Don't get nervous, yo. When a woman breastfeeds, right? What comes out? Milk. Do you know that that's blood? That's actually blood that comes out. But at the last second, it turns into milk. Same thing with the sperm. It's blood. Blood rushes to that area, right? And then it comes out. At the last second, it switches it to sperm. Yo, it's so deep, man. You don't understand how deep Hashem really goes, yo. It's craziness, yo. Crazy. The sap in a tree goes against gravity, yo. Man, I don't... <laughs> yo, yo, yo. I want to talk a little bit about the pigeons that I feed, yo. There's this family of pigeons that I feed. Yo, it's so crazy, man. They stay on some building. They see me coming right away. They come and they come when I... Yo. I feed them like sunflower seeds and they love it. So when I come out, they see me from... I say, oh, chill on this building. So when they see me walk into the place, they come. And yo, it's crazy how they just come right up to me, bro. Like literally surround me. Like people walk by and they see it. They're like, they know something's up. Yo, you have to see how appreciative they are, yo. I don't even know how to explain it, yo. It's crazy because I got a bond with these pigeons, yo. <laughs> I love feeding them. I've listened to words of Torah while I feed them, so it's a double mitzvah. It's deep, yo. And then I got mitzvot on, so it's another mitzvah. You know, just surround yourself with mitzvot, yo. You're going to feel amazing, yo. It's going to give you so much peace. That's why the Torah is darke darke noam. You know why? Because when you study the Torah, it gives you peace in the heart. Yo, I'll tell you something so deep and so beautiful, yo. <laughs> the Torah is likened to water. Why? Because it gives life? Eh, that's a good answer. I like it. But no. Because we could say it's likened to the sun for that. No. It's a tree of life. Yeah, hold on to it, right? Because it's attached to God. I agree. But the Torah is likened to water. You know why? Because the water is constantly going down. Wherever you put water, it's going to go down if it can. And you should learn from that to always put your ego down. To always put your ego low. Let it go and know that God is running the show, bro. And my mother always says, running the show. <laughs> She's so cute. When I say that last part, like running the show, bro, my mother says, and he's running the show. Yes, of course, we know. <laughs> Ay, mommy, I love you so much because you're such a good mother, yo. So loving, so caring. Like, honestly cares. Like, ask yo, yo, I'll give you just something about my mother. The same thing about my Uncle Avram, yo. He used to call me the great. <laughs> make you feel good about yourself. And my mother was cooking good looking, you know, just to make you feel good, yo. Yeah, man. Just like the snake spoke bad, tried to destroy the world. Speaking words that are positive and encouraging. It's beautiful, yo. Like my mother always says, it's so easy to be nice. A smile is for free. Easy. You don't even have to work, bro. Just smile. It's, it's two seconds. But nah, man. You don't see the world smiling today. You know why? Because they got further and further away from God. They just showed this statistic they had about over the last 20 years how less and less people believe in God. And all you have to do is look at how corrupt the world is. And you get the point where there's no God. There's no wisdom, yo. Back to the pigeon. So these pigeons, I feed them, yo. And 
they come around me, surround me, they come right up to me, yo, like they want to talk to me, so I talk to them. I remember one time I didn't have, I said, yo, I'll come tomorrow, I promise you, I'll be here, be leather. So I'll tell you something so beautiful. So the other day they were fighting. <laughs> so you had to see, man, I'm standing there and like I talk to them and then like the one that's starting the fight, I just kind of approach it to like back it up to let it know, like chill, like everybody's got to eat, yo. And then they all eat and then they fly away. And it's a beautiful feeling. I'll tell you a beautiful story about birds. There was a lady, she died. So her son called the rabbi said, we have to bury my mother quick. So they set up the funeral. Nobody showed up. So the rabbi said, what, she didn't have any friends? So when the rabbi said that to him, all of a sudden, 500 birds came and landed right on her tombstone in her grave. So he looked at the rabbi and said, no, she didn't have any human friends. But these were her friends. She used to always feed the birds. And look, rabbi. They're coming to show appreciation. How beautiful is that, yo? A bird. <laughs> a bird. Speaking of birds, yo. Hashem said the dogs are going to lick up the blood of Achav and Jezebel. Yo, yo. She got eaten by dogs. His blood just got licked up by the dogs, yo. Why, why, why? Look what they did to Navot. Yo, yo. That's already on another level, yo. Accused him of taking God's name in vain and cursing God and cursing the king on trumped up charges and then they had him taken outside and stoned to death and then they took his field? You killed him and you stole from him? Like, yo, Hashem was like, enough with this garbage, yo. Yo, man, the one thing Hashem is not tolerating is injustice, is oppressing the poor, making fun of the needy. You know, arrogantly walking away from a bum, telling him to get a job with your nose in the air. Or like they do today, yo. They'll see a bum on the street and some water in a puddle. They'll drive the car right next to it to spray him with the water, yo. And then, you know, laugh as they drive away. Yeah, like they did the other day to this retired cop. They hit him in a bike. He died and they left. Then they'll actually, they, right away, they realized, like, yo, we got to get out of here. Because they saw he was, like, knocked out. They got scared. So maybe for that they'll get a little bit of credit, but in the end they're gonna get destroyed. Why? Because you kill, you get killed. It's just the way it's gonna be. It's the way God set up the world, yo. So be careful with what you do. I already told you, bro. If you wanna enter heaven, you cannot have any sin attached to you. I told this one guy, you eat lobsters. They boil them when they're alive. And now you're eating it. This lobster suffered for you to eat it. You're gonna pay for that. Oh, what are you talking about? You really believe? That a lobster's gonna come. I said, how many lobsters did you eat in your life? He goes, about 500. I said, then 500 of them are gonna be standing at the gate of heaven. You're not entering. You don't get it, yo. Hashem is gonna let each one of them bite you and torture you. And then you'll get in. No problem. But while the sin is attached to you, you're not entering over there. So to all the people that curse, to all the people that act smug, to all the people that are lascivious, and dirty when it comes to sex crimes. None of this stuff, yo. You're not entering. Man, if you're gay and married, for sure you're not entering. You're part of the LGBT. Yo, one year she I couldn't believe it, yo. LGBTQ safe. Man, are you kidding me, yo? So what are you going to put next? Idol worshipping safe? I mean, what do you want? <laughs> what? I mean, I don't understand, man. What the world really? they like, yo, even the Shivot, bro. they like, don't understand who God is, bro. If you have a little bit of a sense of who God is, you never put that on your sticker on your door, ever. Not now and not in 10 trillion years from now, yo. Here, that whole school could never go to heaven with that sticker on. Because the LGBTQ community is anti-God. Don't you get it, yo? Every single person that I know or ever heard of eventually got destroyed by God. So I'm here to give you good advice, bro don't like God, you got beef with God, you got questions for God, no problem, that's your personal issue and you can talk to him about it, but don't you dare try to slander his name, don't you dare try to put him down, don't you dare try to make it that nobody else talks about him or that when somebody talks about him you make them feel awkward, nah, that's not gonna fly bro, it might fly in this fake world, but it ain't flying over there yo. And they got you cold and they got you hot, hot for crimes of passion, cold for indifference. Because you didn't care. Like the world today, or the world better watch out. They're worried about global warming. <laughs> might be the other way. It might be an ice storm, yo. With how cold the world is, yo. Real talk, yo. 
They just don't care. You see, people just don't care. That's it. Well, I care. And I care for you. Because you're my brother. You're from the nation of Israel. You're an Israelite like me. And I love you just for that, yo. And always remember, yo, even if you're a big sinner, just remember what I taught you with the Chav. He felt bad. He felt ashamed in front of the prophet. Right away, Hashem came to Elijah and told him, do you see how my servant, Achav, humbles himself? I don't remember if he called him servant, but probably did to give him extra credit at that moment. You know, why? Because he humbled himself. Will he pay for all his crimes? Absolutely. But you're still going to get credit for humbling yourself. And that's beautiful, yo. That just shows how merciful and loving of a God God is, yo. He's not going to give you extra mercy ever, yo. He's going to give you just the amount of mercy you deserve and a little extra if he wants. But again, only if you deserve it. He's not giving out mercy, bro. You got to earn the mercy. That's what I'm telling you, yo. The mercy comes when you have mercy on others. Then he's going to have a lot of mercy on you. But if you're arrogant, prideful, overfed, unconcerned, and smug, it's the opposite. He's not, gonna, he's not having mercy. He's going to have no mercy. He's going to become merciless, yo. And then he's really going to show you what time it is, yo. Man, Kaddish Baruch they don't know who you are, Hashem. They don't know who you are, yo. They think that you're all loving. You don't punish. There's, you know, people think that all you do is punish. The world got you confused, bro. It's just simple. He's all loving and merciful when you're good. When you're bad, he could become very, very, very strong and very, very vengeful, yo. And you don't want to deal with that, yo. The bottom line is this. When you have mercy on others, God will have mercy on you. When you treat others horribly, God is going to treat you horribly. And that's a fact, bro. Whether you like it or whether you don't, it's a reality that you have to accept. It's like one atheist told me, I don't believe in karma. <laughs> I said, because you're a fool. The fool will mock the words of your wisdom better than me. Yo, yo, this is so deep. Better to meet a mother bear robbed of her cubs than to meet a fool in his folly. Put me in a school to teach that, yo. <laughs> ah, God, this Baruch Hu, some of these schools got rid of me, yo. Yo, you know what kind of... Yo, come on, man. Just listen to my videos and you'll understand the power I hold. And it's not me. It's not me, bro. It's the spirit of God in me. That's what gives me that power. That I can walk into a room of like 30 kids I never met before. And within 10 minutes get them close to God. I remember there was this one. And I'm not bragging. I cut this bro. You know that, yo. So if it comes off like that, I apologize. But there was this one girl, man. I used to tell these kids a story before we used to go to PE. They used to like me. I said, tell us the story, coach. Tell us. Okay, fine. So I told them this dope story. And as we were walking downstairs, this girl, Shirelle, came up to me crying. So I said, oh my gosh, Shirelle, what's wrong? She said, oh, coach, I feel so bad. I said, why? Because of the story? It was just, you know, a sad story. She said, no, not because of the story. So I said, then why do you feel so sad? She said, because I'm not connected to Hashem like you are. <laughs> yo, yo, she was so, so cute. And she wasn't a little girl. She was like eighth grade, yo. Seventh grade for sure, if I'm not mistaken. So I said to her, oh, Shirelle, don't worry, honey. You're going to get there, yo. The fact that you're crying like this, that you want to get to the connection I have, you're going to get that connection and more probably. Hashem is watching you right now. He's watching those tears. And they're very precious to Him because He knows those tears come from the most beautiful place. And that's a want and a desire. To get stuck to your creator, yo. I can't. You got to have it in your heart to know it. Those that know, know that when you put your ego low. And you know that God is running the show. When you let it go, you'll be good to go. I appreciate you, Akadosh Baruch Hu. I love you. And I always love you. And I say that all the time on my videos. I express my love for God because I want you to hear it. He already knows. It's like I told these kids, yo, that videotaped themselves like robbing places. 
I said, y'all don't even need to videotape it. It's already being videoed. Is it by the store? No, by God. Are you kidding me, yo? Come on, man. It's time to open up your mind to understand that the divine is real. He's watching karma. Think before you sin. You can't enter heaven with sins on you, bro. Trust me. They got to clean you first. And sometimes that cleansing is tough. It's not so simple. It's not like you jump in a pool and just chill. Nah, man. It's a river of fire. And it hurts. You understand? Good. I like talking about Alicia Kaddish Baruch I don't know why. You have a connection to the prophet Alicia. Yo, it's craziness, yo. How we threw salt in the water to fix it. How we had the axe handle come up. By throwing a piece of wood in the water. What else did he do, yo? How he killed those kids that made fun of him with the two bears. Um, how he healed Nehemiah. Yo, yo, and this king got so mad because he told him, just dip yourself seven times in the Jordan. So the king said, I came all the way here for that, yo. You didn't even come out to greet me. He told his servant, yo, get out of here with this garbage. There's better rivers where I live than to come here to go in the ocean. What, are you kidding me? So his servants told him, your honor, listen, king, please. If this guy would have told you to run up a tree, jump and fall on your back five times, would you have done it? Yes. Here he's telling you something easy. Do it. I mean, they didn't say it exactly like that. I added to it, obviously, but he got the point. He did it and he got healed. What else did Alicia do? There were some other things he did. I'm telling you, yo, I'm forgetting. Because there were something like 16 or 18 miracles that he performed. Just give me one more, HaKadosh Baruch please. The pot with the food. Yo, yo, I shame you, I so know. Who knows, that could have been the spirit of Alicia coming to me to tell me that, yo, there was a pot. They were all hungry. Some guy, you know, made some food. He picked some things from the garden. And he started, you know, making a pot of food. And what he put in there was poisonous. And they were all like almost dying, yo. So I forgot what he put in there. He put something in there, salt or something. And he told them, eat. They ate and nothing happened, yo. They were all fine. Alicia's deep and Elijah, yo, how he sent 50 soldiers. The king said, come down. He said, if I'm a man of God, a fire is going to come from heaven and destroy. Because they kept calling him, man of God, come down. <laughs> he said, if I'm a man of God, you and your 50 soldiers should burn and die, yo. And they did. Maybe he left the general alive to go back and let him know what happened. Sent another one, they died. And then find the third guy came and said, please, please don't kill me. Please don't kill these innocent men. Just please come down. I beg you. So Hashem told him, go down. You're good. Hashem is dope, man. I like to see like Hashem told Elijah, go to the field in Jezreel. Why? Because the Chav is taking possession of it after they killed Namut. That's why. And I want you to tell him that the sovereign Lord said, <laughs> ah, Hashem is so dope how he pops up. He's all over the place. So like he told one of the kings, who is Sancharib? He told him, I know when you come and I know when you go. Not just I know where you live, right? It's like some gangster say, oh, I know where you live. Okay, so anybody, just Google map it, no problem. Hashem is telling you, I know when you come and when you go like he did to Pharaoh. Pop up at five in the morning in the Nile when he's relieving himself. That's what he told Moshe Rabbeinu. <laughs> Pharaoh was in shock when he saw him though. He said, ah, this is where you go. You have the people here believing you're a god. Enough with this nonsense. Let my people go to a real god. And we know the story with Pharaoh, yo. And from that we learn that God will harden your heart. Why? Why? It's not fair. He took away your free will. No, he didn't. You sin so much that the devil got so in your heart. There's no turning back. You cannot exercise it. That's it. It's hard. It's stuck. It's sealed. You created this problem. That's why your heart got hardened. Hashem, I can't wait to go to Israel. <laughs> I cannot wait, yo. And there's so many places I want to visit. Like, yo. Even this field in Jezreel. Yo, yo. Can you imagine just going there? And then you're not going to see Jezebel's, you know, hands and feet and her skull. But you know that that happened there, that the dogs ate her, yo. And that's what Hashem said to Ahab. All his descendants will be eaten by dogs. 
are killed in the country and eaten by wild birds. The birds will eat the flesh of your flesh. Yo. Protect us always and put this world through. You see what's going on in the world, yo. Nuclear war in a minute, yo. Crazy. And in the end, Hashem is guiding everything. All I could tell you as a Jew, do your best to be the best you can be. Come with a pure heart, refine your character, and purify your soul. Let God know that you love Him and do your best to clean every sin attached to your soul. I love you. I'll forever love you. And I'm always yours, Akutish Baruch. I don't want to stop the video. I want to talk more. Let's talk about what's going on in this politics and this garbage, yo. Politics is such a dirty game. You see these people making fun of each other on stage. And then a month later, they're like, you know, she's the vice president and he's the president. And two months ago, you just called him a racist, said he was a piece of garbage, this, that. Get out of here. It's all fake. Fake, fake politics. There's no possible so politically correct is a lie, bro. Remember this, yo. Yeah, you can lie for the sake of peace, but that's an exception to the rule. The bottom line is this game of politics is dirty. They take taxpayer money, create a crisis, and then keep that money, yo. And the people suffer and suffer and suffer. And now go try to fix it. Years and years of corruption. Yeah, in the end, Donald Trump will do it. But look what he's going through. Barely alive, yo. They put so much stress on this guy, yo. I I already prayed for him a bunch of times privately, but I'll do it one time publicly. I want to say a prayer right now for Donald Trump, yo. I really feel bad. Like they're really putting this dude through the ringer, yo. They're like really trying to break him badly, yo. And no matter how strong you are, eventually it's going to get to you. I don't care who you are, bro. You're not an angel that you can rise above this physical world. And pretend like it's not affecting you. Eventually, it affects you. It affects your children. It affects your family. It affects your peace. You don't have time to rest. So, Al-Kaddish Baruch, it looks bad that this guy did so much for Eretz Yisrael. And he's going through what he's going through right now. Obviously, I don't question your justice. I bow down before you. And let you know that I know you're my maker, my master, the king, the master of it all. But it looks terrible that he did so much for Israel and he's going through this pain that may cause maybe even one of your children to give up hope on you for this world. I only present it like that because I feel it's a strong case to get you to do what I want you to do. In the end, you're going to do what you want to do because you only know all the secrets and everything behind the scenes. But I learned from the Torah that I can ask you that I could present the case, that I could beg you, and I'm begging you to help Donald Trump. I feel a connection to him because I appreciate him. I look up to him as a leader, how he goes out there and he puts his body on the line, yo. He puts his life on the line. There's no doubt about it. that impresses me, yo. That impresses me because he doesn't have to do all this, yo. He can kick back, relax, go to these parties and just play dumb and have a great life. But no And he tried to be nice with them It's not like he came in like Yo I'm gonna destroy them and this. Nah he came in trying to be their friends But telling them yo it's not gonna fly So they treated him like garbage And he attacked back Yo they put a stumbling block in front of the blind The corruption there. And he's pro God They're anti God And the other day they asked him about God I didn't even like his answer yo He's like yeah Because this one guy got up some Christian guy He's like yo God is backing you. The spirit of the Lord is in you. Thank God he didn't say JC, yo. He said God. So Trump's like, yeah, yeah, I know where you're coming from. He didn't say anything about God, which really annoyed me, I have to admit. But right away, Hashem told me, don't forget all the beautiful things he did for Israel. He knows who I am. <laughs> and right away, I calmed down. Because that's the facts, you know what I mean? I love you, Hashem. I love you, Akadosh Baruch because you're in my heart deep. You're attached to my soul. And my soul is attached to peace and happiness. Even when I don't have it, I have it word up. Help him with Even his 
children look like nice kids. Help him, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I want you to help Donald Trump. I want something to happen that the whole world could see karma and say, wow, God is on his side. That's what I want. And hopefully you'll listen and take my plea and accept it. Who am I? Just one out of a billion, yo. You know, one out of billions of people and one out of 13 million Jews. And I'm asking you on behalf of all the Jews that love him to help him to stop this nonsense that he's going through, to give him some peace, to give him some honor, and to make him feel good in his heart, to know that you're with him. Only you can make the justice, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So whatever he's getting, it's cleaning him. I get it, I know it. And I'm teaching the world that when you see Donald Trump suffer, that's for past sins. He's just getting cleansed. It's all love. But sooner or later, you're going to see him on top. He's going to win. You know why? Because he's on the side of God, justice, and truth. And when you pick that side, you can never lose, yo. You never lose when you do the word of God. I'm yours, Hashem. Nobody can take me away from you, yo. Nobody, yo. Nobody. It's not like I'm dating a girl and some girl comes to seduce me and God forbid I might fall in. Nah, bro. There's nobody can come. That's the problem. Nobody can come. That's not even the problem. That's the beauty of it, yo. Do you understand what it is? There's only one. Just one, man. There's not two. There's not another one. There's not a brother. There's not a son. There's not a ghost. There's not a spirit. There's one spirit. God and y'all better understand and recognize that he's the greatest and the most high the most amazing turn a grape into a raisin love you Hashem dressed in their royal robes the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah were sitting on their thrones at the threshing floor by the entrance of the gate of Samaria with all the prophets prophesying before them now Zedekiah son of Canaanah had made iron horns and he declared this is what the Lord says with these you will gore the Arameans until they are destroyed all the other prophets were prophesying the same thing Attack Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, they said, for the Lord will give it into the king's hand. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, as one man the other prophets are predicting success for the king. Let your word agree with theirs and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As surely as the Lord lives, I can tell him only what the Lord tells me. When he arrived, the king asked him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? Attack and be victorious, he answered, for the Lord will give it into the king's hand. The king said to him, How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then Micaiah answered, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, These people have no master. Let each one go home in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Didn't I tell you that he never prophesies anything good about me, but only bad? Micaiah continued, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the host of heaven standing around him on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? One suggested this, and another that. Finally a spirit came forward, stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. By what means, the Lord asked. I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouths of all his prophets, he said. You will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it. So now the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouths of all these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Canaanah, went up and slapped Micaiah in the face. Which way did the spirit from the Lord go when he went from me to speak to you, he asked. Micaiah replied, You will find out on the day you go to hide in an inner room. 
The king of Israel then ordered, Take Micaiah and send him back to Ammon, the ruler of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, This is what the king says. Put this fellow in prison and give him nothing but bread and water until I return safely. Micaiah declared, If you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. And then he added, Mark my words, all you people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will enter the battle in disguise, but you wear your royal robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Aram had ordered his thirty-two chariot commanders, Do not fight with anyone, small or great, except the king of Israel. When the chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat, they thought, Surely this is the king of Israel. So they turned to attack him. But when Jehoshaphat cried out, the chariot commanders saw that he was not the king of Israel and stopped pursuing him. But someone drew his bow at random and hit the king of Israel between the sections of his armor. The king told his chariot driver, Wheel around and get me out of the fighting. I've been wounded. All day long the battle raged, and the king was propped up in his chariot facing the Arameans. The blood from his wound ran onto the floor of the chariot, and that evening he died. As the sun was setting, a cry spread through the army, Every man to his town, every one to his land. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried him there. They washed the chariot at a pool in Samaria, where the prostitutes bathed and the dogs licked up his blood as the word of the Lord had declared.